Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to open the Bible and to look at Psalm 47, where we celebrate the fact that you are king and that Jesus is king over all the earth. We thank you, Lord, that he is our coming king and uh, that we get a chance to rule and reign beside him because of his grace and his mercy upon our lives, Lord, and his blood that makes us righteous. So, Lord, I pray that uh, many people would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior that would have the honor and the privilege of serving alongside him and being co-heirs with all these things, Lord, because of a relationship with Jesus. So I pray that many would get born again and saved and uh, will enjoy the privileges, Lord, of salvation. So, Father, I pray that you would have your will and way as we look into Psalm 47. Help us to rejoice in the great and coming King. We ask that you'd help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, so Psalm 47 doesn't have a lot of uh, extra uh, musical terms like uh, what we've seen last week with Alamoth. Uh, it's basically just a basic opener. Uh, that begins with uh, Psalm 47, to the chief musician. And if you go to 1 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 17, 1 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 17, uh, you'll read about who the chief musicians were that David appointed. 1 Chronicles 15, 17. And mainly, we believe it's Asaph because he's predominant in the book of uh, Psalm. Uh, however, uh, there are others like Heman and Ethan. Then it says, a psalm for the sons of Korah. A psalm for the sons of Korah. I hope you have your Bible. I hope you're looking. It says, a psalm for the sons of Korah. And we talked about that last week. Uh, we rehearsed again in Numbers chapter 26. Um, you can go to Numbers chapter 16 and Numbers chapter 26 because it rehearses the, uh, what happened to Korah and how he rebelled against the Lord and how God opened the earth and swallowed all the rebels that uh, which stood against the Lord and Moses and Aaron, the servants of the Lord. And the sons of Korah were spared because they chose not to dwell in the tents of wicked men like their daddy. Instead of staying with their daddy, they decided to follow the Lord. And when they followed the Lord, the earth opened and swallowed up Korah, but not his children, the graciousness. Uh, you read about that in Numbers chapter 26, verse number 11. Numbers 26, verse 11. The gracious grace of God that spared the children of Korah. And that's why this psalm is significant because it has to do, it's a, a for the sons of Korah or maybe composed by the sons of Korah. The, this uh, uh, about uh, 11 psalms that are the sons of Korah psalms that we talked about. And it begins, uh, this psalm here uh, has the idea of uh, celebrating the kingship of God that God is a king and a great king and a king over all the earth. And so it's, uh, this psalm is not just applicable to David or to Solomon. No, there's gr someone greater than the, the kings of the earth. And that is Jehovah God. That's God Almighty, the king, the great king. And so Psalm 47 uh, uh, lifts our eyes to a higher king. Boy, I'm so thankful. I'm very thankful that God is in charge, that God is king. Uh, I know there's elections coming. And uh, I think it's the stupidest thing to have thousands of people hoping and wishing that the next you know, leader will be this great person. They will not be a great person. They're sinners. They're evil. Some are liars and murderers. 
whoremongers and the scriptures go on and talk about how sinful man is and here uh, we are we're so dumb people look at uh, politicians for hope there is no hope in man <laughs> the Bible talk, talks about this over and over again our hope is in the Lord not man and so uh, you know they're telling us no no religious gatherings because of the pandemic will talk to the people that are in the campaign by the thousands no social distancing no protocol dumb 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 that's why you don't tell us that we can't have religious gatherings no we're gathering for prayer and worship and thanksgiving to almighty god the king and uh, a small virus is not going to stop the kingdom that's about to come. And so, and we're not going to waste our time campaigning for man. That's a total disastrous waste of time. But we will love and enjoy the worship and the praise and the service of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so uh, the outline of the Psalm number 47, we're in Psalm number 47 next week. Lord willing, we'll be in Psalm number 48 and we'll continue with the theme of uh, Psalm 47. Psalm 47 is about the king. Psalm 48 is about the king's throne in Jerusalem, the, the, the holy Jerusalem uh, during the millennial re reign of the king. So I'm going to talk about the millennial kingdom today. But the outline for Psalm 47, ito yung outline niya, no? Chiastic. All right? So, chiastic, uh, uh, again, Pastor Tessin's probably thinking, why are we looking at a Greek chiasm? It, it, the letter is Greek, but the structure is Hebrew. So, there's a Hebrew poetry expressed uh, through um, the Greek letter ki. And so, you find uh, praise to the great king, Verses 1 and 2 matches the last verse, praise to the great king. Verse 9, they match, they parallel. And that's Hebrew poetry is parallels. Uh, the acts or the works of the king, verses 3 to 4, matches uh, ver uh, the acts of the king or the works of the king, verses 7 and 8. And the heart of this psalm, 47, the heart of psalm is sing praises unto our king. Hey, rejoice. Sing praise to our king. Be glad that God's in charge. Be thankful and rejoice and look forward to the time when he will rule and reign on this earth. I'm so thankful that I'm so thankful that world leaders have a term limit. Boy, that's great. May every leader get a term limit. <clears throat> if they don't... Anyway... <clears throat> But not Jesus, not the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, the thousand-year millennial kingdom is just the beginning. That's not the end of his kingdom. That's just the beginning of his kingdom. That's just the time frame for us as human beings. <laughs> as we live in time and space, but God's beyond time and space. And the millennial kingdom, the thousand-year rule here in the millennial kingdom... At the end of that begins the eternal kingdom. It's just extending his millennial kingdom to all eternity. And so Jesus will rule and reign forever. There is no end to his kingdom, but it begins uh, with the millennial kingdom. And so the thousand years, and we'll, we'll look at this time frame here. But let's look at the psalm first, and then we'll talk about the millennial kingdom. So let's begin uh, psalm 47, verse number 1. Uh, to the chief musician, a psalm of Korah. O oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High. That's another name for God. The Lord Most High. Jehovah Most High. And that's how he's going to be known in the millennial kingdom. The Most High. Jehovah Most High. Is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Now, the last Psalm, 46, was about the wedding uh, between the king and uh, Israel, his people. And uh, we get to be a part of it. 
if you're born again and saved. Uh, and But uh, there's more promises that God gave to Israel, not just the spiritual salvation, but also physical salvation and land. Um, Israel's, uh, and we'll talk more about it next Wednesday in Psalm 48, because God's going to give Jerusalem the, the, the primary spot here on earth. But for now, uh, the Lord Most High is terrible. He is the great king over all the earth. This psalm introduces all the earth. They're all going to come under the, the kingship of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He's going to be king over all the earth. Uh, and so uh, we have him as praise, the opening with praise to the great king. Uh, God's plan is that Israel will be a nation among nations, and he will be the king over Israel. Mm -hmm. And then he'll rule throughout the whole entire world through Israel. Uh, go over, for example, to Isaiah chapter 43. Uh, let's go over to Isaiah chapter 43. Uh, Isaiah 43 and verse number 1. Isaiah 43 and verse number 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, this is Israel, and he that formed thee, O Israel, that's the nation of Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. God's going to deliver them and save them, uh, spiritually and physically. I have called thee by my name, thou art mine. And so... This applies directly to uh, Israel. Look at verse number 8. Verse number 8. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations, did you notice that? Verse number 9. All the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it is truth. So all the nations will be gathered into the millennial kingdom, where Jesus is king over Israel, and Israel is a nation over all nations. And all the nations shall be gathered unto them. Uh, let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 2. Here's a good example, Isaiah chapter 2, and uh, verses, uh, let's see, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, Isaiah chapter 2, verse number 2, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house, what's the Lord's house in the millennial kingdom? Well, the Lord's house in the millennial kingdom is the temple of Ezekiel, the fourth temple. See, there are four temples uh, in the uh, Bible. So the first temple is the temple of uh, Solomon. Uh, the second temple is the return from Babylon. That's the temple of Zerubbabel. Uh, then there's the tribulation temple that will take place during the seven-year lockdown uh, after the rapture of all the born-again believers. There's going to be a, a, a tribulation temple. Um then there's going to be Ezekiel's temple, the fourth temple, during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. So there's four temples. At least that. <clears throat> there's more temples, but uh, we're talking about the place of appointed place of worship. Anyway, um, but uh, Isaiah chapter 2 uh, and verse number uh, 3. Uh, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. And many... Uh, people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. We will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God's going to rule and reign in Jerusalem someday. And all the nations are going to listen and gather themselves, uh, at least maybe the representatives of each nation, uh, year after year, for a thousand years, we'll be uh, uh, worshiping Jehovah God in Jerusalem, the kingdom of God on earth. Amen. What a day that will be when that happens. 
uh, forget all the campaigning of man. Thank the Lord that's going to end <laughs> when Jesus rules and reigns. He'll never campaign. He'll never ask for your vote. No, Jesus doesn't believe in asking for your vote. Uh, he rules and reigns. And if you don't believe in him and trust in him as your savior, you're going to go into a lake of fire. And that's why it's important that you're born again and saved. The only way you can be a part of his kingdom is by being born again, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have to receive him as your Lord and savior before it's too late. Otherwise, you'll have no part in the kingdom of God. Um, and you need to know that. Well, we'll look into that at the end. But let's move on in Psalm 47. Uh, let's look at the Acts of the King, uh, verse number 3, Psalm 47, verse 3 and 4. Uh, the Bible says, He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Well, who's our here? Well, the sons of Korah, Israelites, the Jews, the Jewish people. Uh, they're going to rule and reign as a nation among the nations. Verse 4, He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. And we remember what the word Selah means from last week. Selah means pause and ponder and think about what was just mentioned. Meditate. So, verse number 4, He shall choose our inheritance for us. The Lord will assign uh, who's going to be in charge of what during his millennial kingdom. And everyone who's born again and saved will be kings and priests. We'll have something to do. If you're a believer, if you know the Lord is your Savior, if you're born again, if you, if, you, if you believe on the Lord as your Savior, he'll give us responsibilities in the kingdom. And we'll be over, uh, I don't know, maybe over some, you know, some country, some city, some nation, some village, you know, I don't care. <clears throat> We're going to be serving alongside the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords <clears throat> during the Millennial Kingdom. So let's go back to praising the Lord in verse number five and six, <clears throat> praising him. And this is the heart of the psalm. Uh, God is gone up with a shout. The Lord, with the sound of a trumpet, sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our King, sing praises. Oh, God deserves our worship and praise. And we sing. When we sing, we love singing. Uh, our family loves to sing. We love to sing. We love singing in church. We love to sing the congregational songs. Uh, and uh, I don't care much for special music. Sometimes special music's uh, flaky. But uh, singing unto the Lord. Uh, what a privilege to sing unto the Lord. You don't have to wait for church to sing unto the Lord. You can sing unto the Lord anytime. And God receives that worship if it's done in spirit and in truth, not in the flesh. Uh, God will honor that and bless that. Uh, but singing unto him. He is the audience of music, not us. Huh. A lot of people like music for themselves. No, God designed music for him. We're to sing to him uh, and praise him, not praise self or praise someone else. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <clears throat> but God uh, is the king. <clears throat> Verse number 7 and 8, we're back again to what the king will do. Uh, for, the, uh, for God is the king of all the earth. So again, we know this is prophetic. This is looking forward to the millennial kingdom. Sing ye praises with understanding. That's Sometimes it's important that we understand the words that we sing. Uh, sometimes it's good to, to take time and meditate. And think about the worship of God. This word to sing with understanding. If you think about it, sometimes we sing lies to God. Because we're not surrendered or we're not what we should be. And yet we're singing the songs and not thinking about it. Huh. God deserves more than just lazy worship. Uh, vain worship. Lip service. Oh no. Lip service is no service to the Lord. 
<clears throat> so it says here, uh, verse number eight, God reigneth over the heathen. Who is the heathen? Well, the heathen is someone who doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it doesn't matter if they're wearing a tuxedo or if they're wearing a loincloth. If they're without Jesus Christ, they are heathen, according to the scriptures. So, but God, it says here, reigns over the heathen. Okay, so uh, he's, again, God's not campaigning. He's not interested in you, you affirming him or voting for him. That's not how God operates. Uh, God is ruling and reigning over the heathen, whether they like it or not. Uh, and the scriptures here says, God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Oh, my. The holiness of God is, a lot of people say, well, that's not a fundamental doctrine. Hmm. Holiness is not part of the fundamentals of faith. <laughs> but holiness is where the Lord dwells, his throne. He sits upon the throne of his holiness. If there's a fundamental doctrine, holiness of God is fundamental of the fundamental doctrine. I don't care what people say. And more and more, we're getting away from the holiness of God. And God is holy. A man is sinful, but God is holy. Verse number nine, uh, uh, it says here, the princes of the people are gathered together. So there's always this gathering together. To Jerusalem to worship the king. This is millennial language. Even uh, the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong unto God, he is greatly exalted. The shields of the earth. These, this is military talk. This is equipment, military equipment. Uh, you know how the world, world leaders rule their jurisdiction? They do it by military force, by coercion by violence and war, but not God, not Jehovah God. He doesn't rule and reign by violence. He rules and reign by grace, love, mercy, and righteousness and holiness, and by a rod of iron during the millennial kingdom. <clears throat> and so he conquers his enemies today with grace and uh, if you want to be part of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven that's coming down, you need to have righteousness in your heart. And the only way that can happen is by receiving, acknowledging, repenting of sin and turning to Jesus and receiving him as your Lord and Savior, as the king over you. And you submit yourself to him and yield yourself to, to him surrender to him uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 let's look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 here's a requirement for entering into the millennial kingdom here's a requirement Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 20 uh, the Bible says for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you need a righteousness that's uh, more than the outward righteousness of religious people like the scribes and the Pharisees. Their righteousness is only external. It's just to show people. But the righteousness that belongs to the believer is the very righteousness of Jesus Christ. See, that's why you need to receive him. Because your, your righteousness and the scribes and the Pharisee righteousness, not good enough, won't get you to heaven. Won't get you to the kingdom. Only the righteousness of Christ, which doesn't belong to us, but we receive it by faith. When we take him as our savior, he gives us his righteousness. He makes us righteous on the behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the righteous one. Um, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. Notice these words. 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the millennial kingdom. So not everybody that says, Lord, I did this, I did that, I, I was nice, I was good, I was righteous. No, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And what is the will of the Father? His will is that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's his will, that you would put your faith and trust and rest your soul's salvation in Christ. And you don't trust and rest your soul's salvation in religion, in good works. You don't rest your soul in salvation in the Pope or Mary or the saints. You don't rest your salvation in the church. You know, I belong to the church, that's why I'm born again. No, you're not. <laughs> you need to be born again by faith in Jesus Christ only. <clears throat> Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And we have cast out devils in thy name, have done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Well, how do you know if Jesus knows you? Well, he knows those who believe in him. He knows those who have faith in him. And that's the only way you can get into the kingdom of heaven, which is the millennial kingdom uh, uh, here. So basically, here's an outline. Here's a good outline of the Old Testament, New Testament. This is where we belong. This is our time frame. This is, uh, this is our dispensation. Uh, Jesus is coming for all the born-again believers. And that's sometime in the future. We don't know when that will be. We have no concept of when that's going to happen. But it can ha it's ready to take place, just so you know. It's ready to happen. And there's not one thing in the scriptures that preclude his coming. He's coming in the rapture of the believers, of everyone who's born again. And like a magnet, Jesus will be in the clouds and he'll attract every born-again believer, even the dead ones. In fact, the Bible says the dead will rise first. But then after the rapture, what will happen to Israel? What will happen to this world? Well, they're going to be left behind for a seven-year tribulation period, a uh, seven-year lockdown. And uh, no man shall be able to escape this one. <clears throat> the great harvest is uh, the rapture of the believers. <clears throat> and this is our dispensation. This is our time. This is Pentecost time. God desires to have a great harvest. We should be involved in that harvest. If you're born again and saved, you should be telling people about the Lord and so that they can be included in the Pentecost harvest. And after that's going to be the huh, it's going to be the uh, tribulation. Uh, and there's still people that will get saved, no doubt. There are still people who get saved. Of course, they're going to get their heads cut off because they won't take the mark of the beast. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, they'll also be ruling and reigning here uh, because of faith in, in Jesus. Then, after the tribulation, that's seven years of tribulation, Jesus will come back. Revelation chapter 19, read it. Revelation 19, Jesus is coming back with his saints. Well, who's the saints? People who've gotten saved here. People who've gotten saved here. He'll be coming back with his saints to rule and reign in Jerusalem. How long is he going to reign? Well, let's go over to the book of uh, Revelation. And I want you to notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter number, uh, let's see here, yeah, in Revelation chapter 20. How long is this ruling and reigning of Jesus and his kingdom of heaven on earth? How long is that going to happen? Revelation chapter 20. Notice it says here in verse number 1, Revelation 20, verse number 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon and the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Oh, one thousand years. So the 
millennial kingdom is called millennial because of thousand. Hello, that's why it's called millennial. So a thousand years, Satan will be bound. He won't be allowed to tempt. He won't be allowed to, 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 to test and to torture and to uh, try uh, the, the people of God, or anybody for that matter. <clears throat> uh, so that will be a glorious thousand years. <clears throat> Notice in verse number uh, 4, verse number 4, um, somewhere in the middle there it says, uh, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, for in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So it's repeated twice. Go over to verse number 6. Blessed and holy is he, that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Repeated three times. Look at verse number seven. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of, the, out of his prison. So four times. In Revelation chapter 20, it mentions a thousand years. So, can you tell me how long the kingdom of heaven time frame will be here on earth? I think when the Bible says a thousand years, you know what it means? A thousand years. The Bible means exactly what it says. And there's no point spiritualizing, allegorizing the scriptures. Uh, all prophecies are fulfilled, literal. All prophecies are fulfilled, uh, exactly the way it says. And if people tell you, well, the Bible doesn't really mean what it says, run away from that Bible teacher. Uh, they have no business teaching the scriptures. Uh, all of the prophecies of God are fulfilled in the normal sense, the grammatical, uh, literal sense uh, historically, you can see it. Uh, prophetically, all the scriptures are, uh, uh, it means what it says. So if it says a thousand years four times, it means a thousand years, you know. So uh, we'll look more about the millennial kingdom next time when we go to Psalm number 48. But uh, here's the main point, the main lesson of Psalm 47. God is king. He rules and reigns, and we can rejoice in that. We can be thankful to that. These are words of hope. These are words of peace. When we focus on the fact that He is in charge, it'll cause us to sing. It'll cause us to, to, to clap our hands and to rejoice. It'll cause us to serve Him when we think about he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Lord Most High. He is King over all the earth. And His kingdom will, one, one day, His kingdom will be on earth. And that famous prayer, Thy kingdom come, will finally be answered when Jesus comes back in Revelation 19 to take over the throne in Jerusalem and begin his 1,000 year rule and reign on earth and all the nations shall be gathered there year after year to learn the ways of the Lord, the, the word of the Lord and to come to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ <clears throat> because not every, uh, at the beginning everybody who comes into millennial kingdom is born again saved but you have a thousand years of people living and, and they'll die at about 100 plus, according to the scriptures. We'll look at that next week. But that doesn't mean they're saved and born again. Just because the first generation is saved doesn't mean the second generation can know, can, uh, is saved. You're not guaranteed salvation because your mom and dad are Christians. You have to decide to receive Jesus yourself. And mom and dad cannot make your children born again. They have to believe it for themselves. 
That's how it works. And that's how it's going to work in the millennial kingdom, too. So, uh, anyway, we're, God is king. Thank God that he is in charge. I'm so thankful man's not king. Boy, I'm so thankful for that. Boy, they act so stupid. They act like they're in charge and they know what they're doing. They have no clue. They don't even have a sound mind if they don't have Jesus as Savior. They don't have love, power. They don't have sound mind. Because God hath not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of love, power, and sound mind. That can only happen through Jesus Christ. So if you're, if you're president, if you're mayor, if you're governor, if those in charge uh, don't have Jesus in their heart, they don't have a sound mind. That's why they got all these policies that make zero sense. Let's pray and ask God to help. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are king of all the earth, that you are Jehovah God the great God, the great King. And Father, we thank you for the kingdom that's coming. Help us, Lord, to be faithful to you and serve you with joy. Serve you with peace and strength and purpose because it's worthy, Lord. You are worthy of worship and service. Help us to sing with understanding. Help us to rejoice, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And help us to pray that we would see your kingdom here on earth. We look forward to the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to be prepared for that day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.